Hey YouTube, Alan back with another video and today we're going to be doing something of a follow-up video to the Todd Rogers episode from last week. We're going to be talking about Billy Mitchell. A fairly famous gamer I suppose you'd say. Uh, he was one of the stars of the King of Kong documentary and he he's kind of held the, the Donkey Kong Arcade world record for most of the last 35 years or so. Um, his story basically goes back in 1982 you know he got the Donkey Kong high score and held it till the 1999 or right thereabouts where Steve Weeb uh, started to challenge him and there was this battle the Kong kind of contest I suppose it's between the two of them and and that's what the documentary well docufilm wasn't really a full documentary because I think they blurred the lines a little and there was a lot of acting to make a storyline you know Billy Mitchell was very clearly the antagonist of the piece and, you know, his scores looked a bit questionable in the film. At least to me they did. And I think to a lot of people they did. But, there's no doubt he's a very good player. I know people say the same about Todd Rogers. In this case, it's true. Like, Billy Mitchell has absolutely, both back in the day and even in re relatively, like you say, three or four years ago in Kong Offs, still hit high scores of, a, you know, 900,000 range. So he's got public performances that shows that he can really get a high score but not necessarily the high score. And for a long time, his records, uh, or sorry, the videotapes that he submitted as part of the King of Kong uh, uh, film, and subsequent in 2010, when there was another kind of grand unveiling of this video game Hall of Fame thing, these high, where he wonder, where he, basically that's when he got the Donkey Kong uh, high score back, that, uh, there was a lot of questions over those films. And, he also, he actually, just, just for a little clarity, he doesn't hold the world record today. His scores, I don't know if it's even in the top five anymore. Because after the King of Kong, there was a load of interest. It actually spurred on a load of new players to come in and, and start to work towards uh, improving the score and, and really understanding how the game worked. And like the scores moved on, to, you know, good, must be 100,000 since, which was actually, it's a very big amount for a game that was considered so optimized back then. And, but, uh, you know, that's that's a good aspect and to a certain degree Billy Mitchell has actually contributed to that because he's such a character and I, I had seen before the King of Kong I'd actually seen him in, in interviews and heard him on podcasts and all this sort of stuff and what you've seen in the film was only partially true it's so clear that Billy Mitchell plays a role he's very much acting up you the slicked hair and the suit and the tie and you know even in the film like there's one line everyone kind of quotes he's like Billy Mitchell always has a plan well, first of all, if you refer to yourself in third person, well, I guess I did because I said Alan here. Well, I wasn't referring to myself. Uh, you usually you're a bit of a, yeah, you know what? And but he he plays up to that, and he openly said afterwards, "Look, that wasn't even the first take. I was asked by the filmmakers to do it several times because initially it was something like, well, I have a plan,' and they were like, eh, that's not great. We you know we want something a bit more snappy for the film,' and they did it again and again and again, and eventually he did this." Uh, yeah. Well, Billy Mitchell always has a plan line and it's like oh yeah well that suits the role perfect so to a certain degree at least since then he has been playing a character of himself but a character nonetheless and you know he's gone to events and like for example one of the Kong offs which are basically all the top players or a lot of the top players go to these Kong offs once a year where they all kind of try and play live Donkey Kong games so he's he's very much like still going now granted the other players are usually beating him in these Kong offs but he's still going and plus I suppose he's in his 50s so you know yeah fair fair play you know he's still able to compete at a pretty high level but the scores in question they were questioned for for fairly good reasons because they were videotapes and they were supposedly direct feed from direct feed from an arcade board now Arcade boards don't come with jacks that you just plug in a VCR and record off. You obviously have to do something to grab the video. Billy's not a technical guy. He's openly said he doesn't even know how to swap out an arcade board, let alone <laughs> hook up video recording. So the actual provenance of these tapes was always a bit iffy. Much simpler to record from MAME, isn't it? That's what people thought. Especially when they looked at the videos and said, God, he gets very lucky. Because there's a lot of randomness in some of the point scoring in Donkey Kong. He gets disproportionately lucky like in the 99th percentile lucky you know so that's that's questionable too now 
it's a lot easier to get lucky if you're using MAME and you got save states. That's that's a it's really easy to get lucky there. So people speculated for the longest time. And just, just last week, funny enough, literally I think like a day after the Todd Rogers dispute closed, Billy Mitchell's uh, scores were thrown into massive question when um, a bunch of guys from the Donkey Kong forums uncovered or did this kind of analysis between how the board transitions, with the level transitions in Donkey Kong work between an actual arcade PCB and MAME. And for those that don't know, MAME is actually, it's an emulator. So it's basically trying to replicate the behavior of the hardware as best as it can, but it's only an approximation. It, it, usually it's almost impossible to be 100% accurate. And in the case of Donkey Kong, it's not. So the transitions between levels, the way it kind of builds up the, visit, the picture, over a frame or two is different between MAME and the PCB. It's still different today between MAME and the PCB. It's still not 100% accurate. And the videos that, that were presented as part of the King and Kong and as part of these 2010 scores where at the time he had gotten his world record back, they exhibit the MAME characteristics. So if you freeze frame and you can slow down the videos that, that are part of his evidence, you know, his, his proof of scores, they look a lot like MAME. Now, the, the way that was presented to both Twin Galaxies and the Duncan Kong was very compelling. And when I read it, I went, this definitely looks like another case of a cheater. And in, in, in this case, you know, there isn't as much secondary evidence. So in Todd Rogers' case, there was lots of scores being questioned, not just Dragster. Even if Dragster was possible, there was, you know, 65 million in Centipede or whatever it was, there was... Scores that were going past kill screens and rabbit or rabbit or whatever. It, it was there was lots of secondary evidence in Todd Rogers' case. And Billy Mitchell, it's really Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. that's been questioned. He doesn't play that many other games. I mean, he played Pac-Man. He got the perfect Pac-Man. First person that was verified as getting a perfect game of Pac-Man. Because it too has a kill screen, so it ends. And I mean, there was a whole lot of publicity about that. He went to Japan, yada, yada, yada. And it did seem to be, it seems to be perfectly legitimate. So, of course, removing a score from him... You remove that perfect Pac-Man? That's actually a little... Oh, yeah, that one is, is a very notable feat. It's not just any random high score. It was a pretty notable one. It got a lot of mainstream attention. But if you cheat it, it's hard... You know, it's, you can't, like, treat different people differently if, if you're kind of saying, well, if you're cheated, you get your scores removed. In the same way, like, Lance Armstrong was found to be cheating, you know, in cycling and got his titles removed... It didn't matter if one of them was legit, you got them removed. So does the same apply? And while the evidence is very well put together for this case, I would say that it's not as, at least for me, reading it, I can't say, oh, absolutely, I am I am convinced without any reasonable doubt or beyond reasonable doubt that this is the situation, that he definitely cheated. I think it is incredibly likely, and if you were to ask me to vote on it, I would say, yes, he cheated. But... Because this is, you know, taking videos and trying to prove where the video came from and match them up, it does look damning, but it doesn't sway me quite to the same degree as the Todd Rogers uh, dispute did. I'm, I'm still like 95% there, but not 100% there. So I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this one. I'm a bit torn because, you know, it's very much you're talking about a guy who's a character almost. He's, he's already come out and he's gone on to give some interview in some place and he's, he's still playing it up because apparently they want to do a King of Kong 2. So isn't this terribly coincidental that all this is happening just as they want to make a King of Kong 2. Now, I don't know what, where this is going. I, very interesting to see how this plays out. It's, it's definitely not over by a long shot, I'd say. So we'll see. But anyway... I just wanted to kind of give a brief update. We're not going to drag this one on too long because it's not as definitive. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. You know, drop a comment if you want to discuss, discuss the score. Always love to hear what you're thinking about the videos or about this particular topic in question. And don't forget to like and subscribe because that really helps the channel, especially when you've got a small channel and you're trying to work within the YouTube system and all that sort of stuff. And we'll see you again with another video shortly. Bye for now.